Doug. Can I ask you guys a question? And I have the answer, so I want you to think this through with me on the air. I want everyone to ask themselves a question. Why would Canada, which obviously is our ally, which obviously is a member of NATO, why would they allow unimpeded Russian overflights of reconnaissance uh, uh, Russian bear bombers, okay? We were told they don't have bombs, but why would they allow that? What do you think that is, Doug? Well, I'll tell you what, Steve, that question bothers me. It bothered me when I heard it, and I had to verify it was true. It's true. I don't know except to say that uh, I don't know, Steve. Is there a treaty on open skies? Uh, I don't know, man. Help me out. Okay, but that's always always existed. Why now? Why now with the presence of, uh, 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 um, you know, Spetsnaz and through the country? Uh, What do you think? Well... Well, they're they're doing it probably for reconnaissance missions. To uh, they're allowing them to do it to because uh, they know or think that they we are going to be overtaken. Absolutely. Well, now, if you were letting them do that, would you consider those who let them do that would be an ally, a friend, or an adversary? Oh, it's definitely an adversary. But but hasn't this been going on for for a number of years? No, and no, not, not to the degree it them. has. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. You know, people mocked the the, the uh, presence of Chinese troops in uh, in Mexico. Okay, Mexico is the same thing. What what I don't think people understand there are secret treaties. There was a Canadian and Intel guy, and I don't know his name. I'm not covering for him. I just don't. That got me a message through a third party because he knew that you know he was trapped. And the gist of it was that both Canada, he said, and Mexico have treaties to allow the Russians and Chinese to use their countries as staging grounds for the invasion of the United States. And in agreement for that, guess what? Oh. Canada and Mexico don't get bombed. Now, look, you're not going to find out. Well, show me that in the uh, Canadian Free Press or whatever, okay? <laughs> you're not going to find it there. Look, we, we have Russian defectors that have worked at the head of uh, the KGB for 40, 50 years. They defect, and everybody says, well, I don't believe them, you know? See, the problem is is that we through the, through the poison food, poison water, the electromagnetic mind control, Project Monarch, all of the numbing and dumbing, infrasound, uh, uh, S, uh, triple S, uh, 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 spectrum sound, in other words, carrier waves going into your brain night and day, programming you that and you're, you're oblivious to what's really going in your brain when you're watching Devil Vision and listening to the uh, eye pukes, you know. The bottom line is is that we're, we're out of time. And by the way, I don't have one, so I, you know, no one can say, well, I bet you have one too. No, I don't. So okay. the point I'm trying to make, Doug, is, is that we are being set up for conquest. We are being absolutely, and I remember talking to Russians, and again, um, I'll be nice when the way I say this. When everybody else thought everything was fine, I was in the process of interviewing a lot of the former Cold War guys that came out of the Soviet Union, came out of Eastern Europe, uh, our guys that basically were agency assets, you know. And, right. and I learned a lot, and I told you the story how I did it. I basically just kept my mouth shut, and those days I could hear better than I can hear now, and I just listened. And I would ask the right questions, and here's the deal. I believe God gave me the questions to ask. And there was no top secret stuff, but it was a, it was a, how do I say this? It was an astonishment even on the different um, KGB agents or former CIA agents, the guys that still were, you know, even uh, related to caring about this country, how easy it was and how easy it would be to take us down, okay? And I gotta tell you something. You know, what I learned, uh, uh, 10, 12 years ago, everything I was told then is now. And so I've been on talk radio, you know, just blasting my little heart away, blasting my mouth away. And, and the people who listen to me and have even listened to us recently know that nobody gets knocked off the air more than Steve Quayle and Hawk. I don't think anybody ever has, you know. And when people tell me I have inferior equipment, that really makes me, you know what, a little upset. <laughs> you know, I got news for you. You know, you need to go find a donkey farm and embrace the burrows behind because the point being is, is that it is, is he, can I say something? This is what's the problem, you guys. There's a total mindset. It's not only called normalcy bias. It's called, it's, it's called and I, I coined this years ago. You probably remember, Doug. I called it uh, reality denial syndrome. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. Yeah. And and so so when you live in a virtual world, the real world can no longer impact, affect, or break through because everything you do is a phrase. Everything you do is an electronic parenthetical insert. It's an action figure. It's everything that I think I somebody told me I don't play video games, but uh, uh, I don't know one of the newest video games. Uh, uh, number three, and the, somebody knows what it is, send me an email, and I apologize, I'm not a gamer, never have been, never would be, but the bottom line is, is that it, it, the whole gist is the Russian takeover of the United States. Maybe it's called a glory three or something like that, I don't know. So, the point I'm trying to make is, even the video games are yelling it out. Everything is telling us what's going on, but where do we do? We're, we're, we're a lawless country. Joe, you know this is, that, that lawlessness is rampant in the land. You've had the situation where the uh, attorney general was felt in con- or found in contempt of Congress, and his Justice Department won't basically arrest him or won't yeah, pursue him. What a surprise! They had the officers that they. I mean, they could have arrested him. Uh, they had the authority, the ability, and, and they could have done it. But yet, he's still the attorney general. I mean, they bring him up on contempt charges and then tell him it's okay that you lied to us and you're hiding stuff and documents. You can still have your job as attorney general, the top law enforcement officer of the country. It makes no human sense. I mean, it really doesn't, uh, Steve. Yeah, through, without looking at this spiritually, none of this makes any sense to me. Right. Anyway. Right. I mean, as an investigator, it, look, if I, if I would have done half the stuff, if I would have said, no, I'm not going to release the documents to you um, in a courtroom or Congress or wherever, yeah, yeah. I, I'd be sitting in jail. And you know? we, talk, we talked about this uh, the other day. The baseball players who were held uh, and put in jail for not testifying in steroid cases in front of Congress, uh, who were brought up on perjury charges for that. Yet Holder uh, commits perjury. It's uh, in full view. He gets uh, uh, whatever by the Congress. Uh, I the well, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But, but see, people people outside of the world, outside of the legal world, I don't think understand the gravity. I mean, they understand the words, but they don't understand the gravity yeah, of that's those. lawlessness, and that's what Steve's saying. I, right. I think. You know, let me share something with you. You know, up in Montana, the the uh, Friends of the Earth got us to obviously reintroduce grizzly bears, and they all obviously got us to reintroduce wolves, okay? And everybody's wondering, gee, where did all the elk go? Well, they're eaten by the wolves. But so there's an interesting story. Thank you so much, Terry, for sending it to me, about a bear kills 70 sheep in Montana. Warning, and it's pretty graphic. It's pretty sad. But what is the Russian bear? You remember hearing about beware when the Russian... Russian bear arises or awakes out of its slumber? Yes. Do you guys remember that? Yes. If you don't, let me share this with you. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the poet. If someone can recall it for me, Sue or anybody else, but it said, Beware when the Russian bear comes out of hibernation, okay? Russia didn't lose the Cold War. What a bunch of silly twits that even think that. Russia went into the most amazing, amazing counter espionage feigning their own destruction to set them up in essence they became they they took down the iron curtain and i said it even at the time it came down i said you guys were all clapping at the uh berlin wall coming down just let me make it easy for you all the spies who had a hard time in the east getting in the west now got carte blanche well the bear is the russian the sheep are the americans so what she's picking up on and terry yes there is a an amazing uh thing here the bear has arisen, and the sheep, which are, are the dumbasses, and it's a biblical term, I cannot believe that the American military, outside of being in cahoots with the Russians, they have to be, would allow the Russian bear their presence. We're talking 1,000 exercises in the next couple months. And it's a moot point because I think the Middle East is going to uh, obviously uh, dictate a much sooner timetable. You guys probably saw it. Ahmadinejad said, go ahead, Europe, put an embargo on us and watch what happens. They're already licking their chops. They're not licking their chops. You see, the dumbass, and I'm sorry, but the dumbass uh, Pentagon people don't get it. It's not a question of delivery systems. It's what a question of what's already in this country. It's not a question of searching for nukes that might be in this country, they're strategically positioned in this country. And, and, and again, Doug, I went through the whole nine yards, 
after uh, you know the break of the Soviet Union. The United States, as I said last time on your show, was the only nation that didn't ask Russia where all their prepositioned nukes were placed in this country prior to you know the breakdown and breakup of the Soviet Union or what was seen as that. Somebody knows where they're at, and, and, and by the way, you guys, these aren't Cold War relics. These are not like the Weldon Committee. Uh, look up Kurt Weldon and the Weldon Committee. You'll find that, uh, oh, good night. Uh, you'll find that the Russian general who was uh, Boris Yeltsin's national security advisor, Alexander Labed, testified. You, you can see on YouTube, Labed, L-E-B-E-D. Right. I basically said that I told you the night he was his helicopter went down, I said he was assassinated. I was literally one week away from getting him on my radio program, Doug. Oh, man. Wow.